Okay, the purpose of this video is to show you how to divide imaginary numbers. And in this specific video, I'm going to show you how to rationalize the denominator of an imaginary number expression when the denominator contains an imaginary number in it. You can pretty much treat imaginary numbers, uh, and, and what imaginary numbers are is probably the subject of another video, but you can treat imaginary numbers pretty much the same way you can treat binomials. In other words, you have some type of a real number plus a real number times the imaginary i or i. And just like you do when you have radicals and there's a binomial radical, you want to multiply by the conjugate. Now, why do you want to do that? Your final answer should never have an imaginary number in the denominator. You always want to try to rationalize it or get it up into the numerator. And if you remember your radical expressions, you can multiply any binomial by its conjugate. Its conjugate, remember, is just basically the same terms, and you change the sign in between to the opposite of what you have. So if you have a plus, change it to a minus. If it's a minus, you would change it to a plus. And then we would multiply it by... 3 minus 2i over 3 minus 2i. In other words, that is an expression of 1. Why? Well, I don't want to change this. I'm not solving for any variable. I don't want to change the quantity of this problem. Multiplying it by 1 doesn't change the quantity. It might change the expression, the way it looks, but it doesn't change the quantity. And remember what we're trying to do is to get the i out of the denominator and into the numerator. So I really don't want to change the quantity, just the way it looks. So this is actually a really good way to go. Now by doing this, I'm going to have a FOIL down here and just a regular distribution up there. Let's go ahead and do those separately. 1 times 3 is 3. 1 times negative 2i is easy. In the denominator, however, I do have a FOIL, don't I? I've got a bit, it's like a binomial times a binomial. So 3 times 3 is 9, 3, maybe minus 6i, 3 times negative 2i. Do the middle terms, maybe plus 6i, and then do the last two terms, it's minus 4i squared. So let's take a step now, just take a second rather, and let's look at this particular step. What do I see? This part looks okay. Down in the denominator, I'm noticing that I can gather these terms and just cancel them out. And I also have an i squared. Now, i squared happens to be one of the identities for imaginary numbers. Remember that? There are two identities that you really need to know. That i squared is negative 1 and that the square root of negative 1 is called i. Okay, so with these two numbers, or with these two identities rather, you can make the switch from real numbers into imaginary numbers. So in this next step, let's rewrite, let's take those out, let's rewrite the i squared as negative 1. 3 minus 2i, notice down here I'm going to have 9, these go away, minus 4 times negative 1, because I just substituted. And I've kind of accomplished part of my objective, right? I've gotten the i out of the denominator. So now I'm going to have 3 minus 2i. In the denominator, I'm going to have 9 minus a negative 4, or 9 plus 4, which is 3 minus 2i over 13. Now, for some teachers, this is an acceptable answer. I, you know, I personally like to change these type of uh, final answers into what's called a plus or minus bi form so that the denominator would be 1 or would, excuse me, that there would be a separate a, a separate b. And how would I do that here? I would just do this. This denominator works for both of these terms up top. So I'm going to say 3 over 13 minus 2 over 13 i. And then I got the a plus or minus b i form. And there's my final answer. Okay, so let's review real quickly. 
if you've got an imaginary number in your denominator, multiply by the conjugate. Okay, remember just change the sign in the middle, keep the terms the same. By doing that, you're going to get some type of a multiplication up top, some type of a multiplication on the denominator. When you do that, the middle terms will fall out, the i's disappear, you'll get an i squared. Remember to change that to negative 1. Once you do that, go ahead and clean it up, S multiply by any negative 1's or whatever you have to do, and come up with your final answer. If your teacher asks you for a plus bi form, just change the denominator so it is becomes the denominator for each of the terms in the numerator, and those will be your two answers. Okay, good luck. I hope that helped.